Hello there, everybody. Hello. We're, we're, we're back as we as we threatened that we would be. It's true, yes. Uh, to talk the back end of the Obi-Wan Kenobi Disney Plus standalone series. You thought you'd just have knowledgeable Star Wars experts talking about the last three episodes of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Mm-hmm. That's right, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> what? Yes, that's, that's right. That's the level of discourse you're going to get here, folks. <laughs> that's exactly it. Now, obviously, there's going to be full spoilers here. I got an Irby word but bloody Ikea the other day. Did you really? Yeah. Did, did, did the Allen key had that all go with it? Yeah, just, just depressing and it collapsed. I and, hate all of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 you're right. But then it finally believed in itself <laughs> and it was great. And then so. it, did a, it threw a bunch of rocks and it did yeah. a big spin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Three stars. <laughs> uh, leave a like if you could, because we're going to get right into it. What, one of the things I wanted to talk about uh, from Chapter 5 mm-hmm. was the reappearance of Hayden Christensen. Not, now, what you're saying here is yeah. nothing notable happened in Episode 4. No, no, absolutely. I mean, I, I quite liked that whole uh, that whole sequence of busting in and out. You know, like we saw in the video game, they they just did that. Yes, you know? right. Uh-huh. It's pretty much beat for beat. but. The idea to bring back Hayden Christensen, you know, people had been thinking, and we even talked about it, like, why would you even do this unless you're going to, like, show his face? Mm. And we got that flashback, plus some other brief glimpses of him. Mm. But I am fascinated and confused by the choice to not de-age him. Right, yeah. Because they can. he looks old. No, he doesn't. But he certainly looks, he looks exactly as old as the actor Hayden Christensen is as opposed to however old he's supposed to be in the prequels. Yeah, like just, 19. Just just, just for lo- smooth and flawless and no no forehead wrinkles from, you know, life. Life, mm. exactly. And Star Wars fans probably. Oh, you know? yeah, there's a few of those, aren't there? Yeah. I mean, he's a great 40. Don't get me you've wrong. You've got a lifeline. You've got a career line. You've got a people asking you about Star Wars line. <laughs> That's right. We even had one of those. Mm. We didn't even work on him. But... I'm just, I'm just kind of confused, and I think a big part of it is also he's a different color. If you look at those prequels, uh-huh. he is like golden brown. You mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe it was Coruscant winter, and he hadn't had his tan. Maybe, sure. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just was kind of baffled by that decision, and it was really good to see him. And like, I did enjoy that sequence between the two of them. Maybe he hadn't had his morning calf. He might not have had his morning calf. But this leads me to something else I want to talk about, Mason, mm-hmm. in, in this series in general. And it's a bit of a beef, if you don't mind. Who have you got beef with? I think. The light- or as they call it in the Star Wars universe, Biff. <laughs> the Star Wars universe, Biff. Yes, yes, okay, that's gotcha. right. <laughs> We're recording this quite late at night. We are. But the lightsabers in this. Go on. I, Is it they're skinnier? Something about them doesn't work. And I okay. think it's because if you look at the originals and even the prequels, they're superimposed, for lack of a better word, over just grey poles, right? Okay, yeah. And mm-hmm. they flicker in and out, and it's an old kind of 70s and 80s technology, which has then been digitised for the, for the newer... And it inspired so many people to hang out at the back of a shopping centre with like old fluorescent (laughs) tubes and smack them into each other. Exactly. And I think also, and then when they moved on, you know, for the newer films, like the new trilogy, for example, Mm -hmm. they had like a, like a dimly glowing beam, which they then replaced. Okay. But I feel like a lot of the time in this series, and we've seen it a bit in in some of the other Star Wars stuff, like the first time we saw Luke in uh, The Mandalorian, it, they they look like solid glowing fluorescent stunt lightsabers that you'd buy at Disneyland. I feel oh. like the glow mm-hmm. is really intense and they kind of wash out everything else. Okay. And it, it doesn't feel like kind of ethereal kind of laser sword from another time. It just feels like, you know, like a fluorescent tube kind of being <laughs> smacked against another one. That's what the people want, James. <laughs> you were wrong and everyone else is right. I just think you really kind of notice that, though, especially in that flashback sequence I was talking about. They just, mm-hmm. for me, they don't feel the way that they have in all of the oh. other uh, trilogies across the board. You know maybe what? it's just me. I think maybe it is. I didn't pick up on that. Maybe it's because you have kids now. <laughs> I think it's probably because I have kids now. Yeah, right? It's probably got a lot to do with it. Speaking of lightsabers, what happened to Reva's lightsaber at the end of this? She went, this belongs to the desert. Okay. Or Obi-Wan. What if Obi-Wan just gave Luke that? He's like, look, I have two. Which one do you want? This one, you can fly with this now, one. This, this one, this is an elegant weapon from a forgotten age. But actually, this one's got two red blades and it does a helicopter thing. It's freaking sick, actually. I can't remember. Some some bird gave it to me. I can't remember what her, her whole deal was. In fact, I'm keeping this one. You can have you can have two blue ones. I don't care. <laughs> I'm going for a fly through the canyon. <laughs> we. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, we're obviously going to see that character again. Let's talk about her a mm-hmm. bit. 
So I feel like the payoff for Reva was pretty solid. Yeah. I I mean, everybody kind of cottoned on initially that, yeah, obviously she's going to be one of the younglings. Oh, but that foreshadowing wasn't for no reason. <laughs> no, it wasn't for <laughs> no reason. It's crazy, right? Well, I complained about it anyway. <laughs> I said unnecessary. But I also thought, uh, and this is what I was hoping for, and I, I nearly mentioned it in the last video that we did. I like the idea that she's trying to get closer to Vader because that's the quickest way to kill him. Mm. She's thinking like, I can I can get my power levels up. Yeah, right. You know what sure, I mean? sure. I'll, I'll wait till he turns his back. Mm, I'll put some points into dex and some points <laughs> into strength. Maybe you should put some points into sneaking though. You, you know? know, we should put some points into And here's the thing we've always wondered. Yeah. We've always thought, why don't Jedi just switch each other's lightsabers off? Mm. And I guess what we've learned here in the fight between Reva and Darth Vader is if you were never fully trained as a Jedi, a real Jedi can just... Stop your lightsaber by thinking <laughs> about it kind of hard. Yeah. So that's yeah. fun. I did enjoy that sequence, though, where she's just going ham and he's just like, I don't even Come have on. it into legs and this is this is quite easy. Mm, yeah, yeah, just, yeah, just just stepping aside. You will never get this. You will never earn this promotion. <laughs> <laughs> but I like the idea that, you know, she's all bluster and her motivations are different from the other Inquisitors. Mm. You know, they don't get along because they are not- They're a bunch of bitches. They're a bunch of bitches, but they are they are driven by different motivations. Mm. So she looks down on them, you know, in the same way that they all look down on each other, but she's got an extra level of resentment because she's just purely like, if she managed to kill Darth Vader, mm. she'd probably just be like, I, I quit, I guess. It's not something she's, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not the career opportunity no, she's actually looking true. for. Yeah. There's probably a lot of reports from Darth Vader where he's like, "You seem distracted here. Are you sure you want to be here? <laughs> where do you see yourself in five years?" I bloody cut your head off. I see myself in the bloody. F- Sorry, I didn't catch that. I said I love killing whatever the thing is that you love killing. Oh, I love killing that too. <laughs> Obi Wan Kenobi. Yes. Oh, speaking of, we we didn't even mention Sung Kang, who is. Han from the Fast and Furious franchise. Well, is... he's not in it very much, is he? No, but he's still there. And he's I think he's doing there, a great yeah. job, yeah. Yeah, and the other guy who plays the Grand Inquisitor, mm. he also hinted the other guy who plays the Grand Inquisitor that, you know, he, we were going to see someone fly, and nobody flew. That's do true. You th- do you think that's too silly, or do you think they tried it and they hit the roof of the volume? What happened there? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, mm. I, mm, yeah I reckon thematically or tonally, I think it might be a, have been a bit too silly for an, a story where, you know, there's there's redemption and fixing your past mistakes and et cetera, and then suddenly somebody can be like, woo <laughs> I'm the cavalry, here I come, whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we obviously saw that Reva survived. There's a bit of contention in terms of, like, why would Vader leave her alive, you know, mm-hmm. all of those things, because the, the, the story had to continue in this particular direction because they had all these chapters to fill and that is true, this yes. is the direction they had to go. But I think, you know, obviously it then leads into her redemption arc. But I also liked that Aunt Beru got to say and do some things. You know what? I, I didn't I didn't expect Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru to be such brawlers, quite frankly. <laughs> Just... <laughs> he took that thing. He had that thing from the trash compactor that, yeah. you know, that tried to separate uh-huh. it. He's using that like he's an American gladiator yeah. you know, on that bridge. Yeah, yeah. Baru's just, just firing that blaster. Just, yeah. Just uh, kicking off there. Good for her. But I also and know- she was the one who's like, we should be ready to shoot. Let's get all the guns. Yeah. <laughs> You have some of my guns. <laughs> it's like that character. It's like Judge Reinhold's character from Beverly Hills Cop Two. Uh, you guys remember he's obsessed with guns. I don't remember. I, I think I've only seen one and three. Oh well, then you wouldn't know. And then the movie Metro, which is not a Beverly Hills Cop movie. Is that mm, correct? So far, so they might far. tie it in together. I hope they do. Mm. I did notice though that Uncle Owen he missed that first shot. Like she did not block it at all, and he mm. he clean missed the back of her head. Yeah. Wow. The whole that whole thing actually reminded me, and we've talked about this before, of the Star Wars Infinities comics where there's an issue where Darth Maul turns up at the Lars homestead oh, and yes, he's uh-huh. like, I'm here to come here to kill some people. Mm-hmm. Who wants to be killed by me? And that was the original first it was also a non canonical showdown between Darth Maul and Obi Wan Kenobi. There was a lot of that in mm-hmm. it, you know. Mm-hmm. Sure, and there's sure. a yeah, and there's a lot of comic stuff in this, like that white Jedi outfit with the goggles that he's wearing at the end. That's from a recent Star Wars oh, comic. I see. Do you like I continuity? I love continuity more than anything. Then you must Except love lore, I guess. Oh, okay. Continuity and lore. Yeah, okay. Because if you love those things, you must either love or hate Star Wars, Mason. Or somewhere in the middle, depending Depends on Depends on the day, I guess. Depends yeah. on the day, yeah. But I guess the whole thing in uh this whole thing was leading into a Obi Wan Kenobi, Darth Vader rematch, rematch. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Rematch, pre-match, because they have another rematch after this. Terrific, yes. Later down the line. I mean, it might be one of many. 
This might be the finale. If they do another series of Obi Wan Kenobi, it might be. I don't think they can come back to this well. I think there's a very good chance they'll they'll do something again, and uh-huh. maybe we'll talk about it towards the end of the video. But you can't be like, anyway, they are. <laughs> they ran into each other at a I don't know at a supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in in the in the in the it's uh, like two exes running into each other in a rom com in, the, in, in the, the supermarket in the special buy section of Aldi. <laughs> That's they right. both want that last metal detector or whatever. <laughs> what other countries have Aldi? Surely they do. I think so. Mm. What's what's the equivalent? A Costco? Maybe not. No. Anyways, look it up. Uh, so there's a stupid aisle and two stupid <laughs> men would be in it. They'd have a fight. That's right. It's all the context you need. <laughs> That's true. So uh, I liked how they slowly built up Obi-Wan's confidence and that, you know, came from, you know, helping out people and realizing his purpose, et cetera, mm-hmm. and so forth, developing his relationship with Princess Leia and so on. But then they're just like, oh, we found another pile of rocks to fight in. Like he couldn't have, I mean, I know I'm not looking for like a lava planet again, okay, you know, right, but right. why are we doing two piles of rocks? For so both they can the... throw piles of rocks at but each other. But you can other. throw other things. It's true. I just thought that they was. They could have done it in Tatooine Square and. Yeah. Thrown people at each other. I mean, you, they can't do that because then he'd know that he was there, et cetera. Yeah, and so forth. yeah. I think they very cannily uh, made the choice to make sure Luke never saw anything, anything including yeah. even just a lightsaber firing up because he, no. you know. He was out that roof. He was yeah, off. That's yeah. Right. No, you're absolutely right. But that being said, I did enjoy the battle and I, I liked that it was brief mm. because I don't think there needs to be a 40 minute battle sequence. Like, I, I Revenge of the Sith is a movie that I think is. Okay. Sure. <laughs> and I think that lightsaber fight is spectacular in so many ways, but it just keeps really moving does along. Keep going, we, it, yeah. We've done recent videos on it. But I like the bit where Vader's like, and this is why you always lose. But like he beat you so badly last time. <laughs> well your limbs came off. Yeah, you, you changed your height. Like that's how <laughs> badly he beat you. Like yeah, uh-huh. anyways. I just <laughs> maybe maybe they reset his memory every time he goes back to the castle, so he only remembers the one time he beat him earlier and chucked down that fire. <laughs> okay, yeah, you'd feel pretty good about that. Mm-hmm. But even but then there's other things like he's just leaves some rocks on Obi Wan Kenobi, and it's like I think that'll. I think, I think I'm pretty sure I got him. Yeah, it's interesting that he went from uh, Obi Wan, I'm going to get you and I'm going to torture you forever. Yeah, and then later he's like, actually, I'm going to hit you with some rocks and leave you for dead, and that's probably yeah probably fine. I need to wee. <laughs> Yeah, right. Just wear the suit, mate. <laughs> Just wear the suit, make sure he's dead. I need to empty my Wii container. <laughs> That's right. And it's in the helmet. Oh, it's no. Very unpleasant. <laughs> Yeah, I, I just, I also, you know, seeing Obi Wan, you know, rally and come back, mm-hmm. and when he was throwing those rocks, mm-hmm. he just looked like he was having a great time <laughs> right. hitting Darth Vader with rocks. There's a sort of, there's a piece of fan art I think that I saw recently, which is sort of it depicts what some people wanted, how they wanted Episode Four to end, and it's like Obi Wan raising a bunch of blasters with the with the Force and oh, okay. firing all the blasters, and I'm like, this. That's this was very <laughs> reminiscent of that. But, Do you think uh, they they snuck it in just quickly? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, no, I really enjoyed that. And I also liked that he just went for all his buttons, which is the thing that you'd go for, you know? Go for the buttons, you know? (laughs) I thought that was terrific. And, you know, he gets the slash across his back. You just hope they're not make stronger buttons. Oh, no. You don't want to hit one of those. No, absolutely not. Make taller buttons. Oh, no. (laughs) Would that be easier? I don't know. But, you know, of of course, I I think this was always building to it. And we've seen this, of course, in uh, Star Wars Rebels. He gets... You know, he, he gets through the mask. Mm. It's the different side to what Ahsoka yeah. did in, in, in Rebels. Anakin's gone. I am what remains. But what was interesting, I thought, initially he seems like he, maybe it's just the lighting or just my TV, he doesn't have like the yellow Sith eyes. Oh. And then later as the kind of the lighting changes and he gets, he's that very creepy smile mm. like seeing like knowing that darth vader like sm- is smiling under his mask a lot of the time it's just like oh that's that's a bad that's a bad image a lot oh, of the I time could. he's got the smile that says oh, i've got a secret <laughs> yeah. i thought all that was terrific and and, i like the switching of the voice oh, between james l jones and, and hayden christians yeah that was great i am not your failure obi-wan we've seen that before in, in rebels as well but yeah i thought that i was, haven't no we we covered it we did the we oh, episode my, it. <laughs> my memory gets reset after it was, one of these, so. it was a different, it was Matt Lanter, it wasn't Hayden oh. Christensen, but they they have done this. And I think the idea that Obi-Wan was redeemed because he's just like, you know, he's told that 
oh, you didn't kill Anakin Skywalker, I mm. did. And everyone's like... I was a turd already. I was yeah. a real turd before it happened. He's like, oh, that feels good to hear, actually. Thank you so much. Yeah. Now I need to wee. I'm going to go. <laughs> and I'm going to wee normal. <laughs> Jealous. What do you think of that? <laughs> but I, just that whole performance and just that, again, that creepy mm. smile. And they snuck in that Obi-Wan calls him Darth because he calls him Darth in A New Hope. And people are always like, why would he call him Darth? Isn't that just like calling someone Mr.? I you know? see, right, So they're right, just right. like, we'll sneak, we'll sneak that in, mm. you know, but <laughs> that'll, that'll be fine. But I feel like having not really looked at a bunch of reactions at time of recording, this is the thing that people wanted to see, right? I think so, yeah. Or maybe more of a fight. But for me, I loved that it was short. I, again, I don't need 50 minutes of, of this. <laughs> yes, you know? 50 minutes of fire and conveyor belts. No, it's, it's fine. I think it did all the things that needed to be done. It, it, it got the message across. It was, mm-hmm. you know, a really solidly shot and, you know, choreographed, fight scene. I thought it was really good. And he didn't kill him. Uh, Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan didn't kill Darth Vader, that is, because mm. he, he can't. He's not allowed to for continuity. That sake. is true, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. But then what, what I... <laughs> I'm getting word from the producers. No, you live today, Darth Vader. <laughs> Darth. <laughs> but then... It ended, it ended like 14 times like it was Return of the King. Yeah. And that to me just felt like maybe this could have been a movie. It was like, sure, yeah. you know, we got Reva get redeemed. He gets to say goodbye to, to Luke. And, he, mm. you know, he's like, hello there. We got we got that thing. Hello there. Leia. Oh, you got to do the two finger point. It, of course, yeah. yeah. The, the two things that people wanted, hello there and the two finger point. <laughs> That's right. That's the right. rest is just filler at this point. <laughs> oh, redemption arc, don't need it. Yeah, I, I, like, I don't think he needed to go back to see Leia at yes, the end. Yes, he did. We needed the origin of her blaster holster if in fact she has it <laughs> in previous movies i don't know but yeah yeah probably. yeah yeah, yeah. You're, you're absolutely right i also enjoy that it just kind of dawned on me seeing you know the city that she's from it just looks like a bunch of vape pens all those buildings <laughs> <laughs> but yeah but you know i guess it was a nice moment to be like you know i knew your parents and they were both pretty good well one more than the other anyway i'm going yes. uh, so, but he could have done that in a little message uh, you know that's true yeah yeah but anyways but you know, and then we get the Emperor appearing again and Darth Vader's like, oh, I hate Obi-Wan, I'm going to kill him. And the Emperor's like, you seem, come on, just let it go. And he's like, fine, mm. fine. Settle down. We're not. A, you, you seem a bit angry. <laughs> you, you might be too angry for this job, Darth Vader. <laughs> yeah. We, you it... know what we say? Anger leads to hate, but settle down. Right? Just... <laughs> That's right. The Sith Creed. Uh, but what did you think about that, the, the, emperor, the emperor returning? God, that that makeup wildly fluctuates. It does, doesn't movie. it? Yeah. <laughs> There's no continuity sometimes there whatsoever. Sometimes I look. Sometimes I look, and I'll, I'll, you know, sometimes I do. I do watch these various Star Wars shows, and I'm like, yeah. And something happens, and I'm like, what year is this set in again? I've yeah. been watching this for four hours at this point. <laughs> <laughs> this, oh yeah, okay, it is set after. All right. Great. All, all I, all I love about you know the Emperor though, what I'm really looking forward is that his hands are like this. You know, like he's a, like like he's a, a T-Rex. Yeah, like a little kangaroo fella, mm, you sure, know? Sure, sure, sure. That's my favourite thing mm. about him. Yes. <laughs> That's good stuff. But no, really, genuinely good to see him. Mm-hmm. Uh, impressive that they got him back for, you know, just that little moment. Is that impressive? Because he'll do anything. He's yeah, in everything. No, I mean, you know, it's... You could have put him in more stuff, I oh, guess, that's true, and, yes. and they showed restraint. Oh, there. you're impressed by the restraint, okay, yes? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, of course, Liam Neeson turns up and he's like, "Hello, mm. um, what do you think of what my think long of hair and, and beard and, yes. and all of those things?" Yeah, and you were saying before the show hadn't aged a day, you yeah. know, looking really good. But it, uh, you, but as you pointed out, it is the the beard and the hair and the fact that he's blue. No, doing, it definitely helps. He's yeah. doing a lot of heavy lifting there. Yeah, but still, no, he, he does look he does look good. But did you were you looking that for that means more adventures though from more those adventures, guys? That's right. Adventures. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm excited yeah. for that. Are you? Buddy comedy, yes. Buddy comedy. It would be easier to solve crimes if you've got a ghost, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's a hundred percent there's a there's a TV show that is that already. Yeah. Like they made it in the seventies or eighties or something. Called Ghost Mates or something <laughs> like that, you know? Oh, what about a Postmates driver that's a ghost? That's great, actually. Mm, yeah. That's my idea, by the way. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> like Postmates would let us do it. Yeah, yeah. that's yours, no problem. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I don't know if I, I – I don't think I needed a big sit-down with Qui-Gon either. Like, I don't need – Yeah. I did feel like, again, like they were just like, here's all your endings. Here's everything that you wanted yeah, to mm-hmm, see, mm-hmm. you know? But I felt that was – like, compare and contrast that to, say, the ending of Rise of Skywalker – that, yeah, that gave every ending that you 
could possibly need, I guess, to check off a bunch of boxes, but it didn't feel good. No, it, it felt certainly bad. Did, yeah, but I'm no. like, this is fun. I'm loving seeing. He's saying a goodbye to Leia. That's nice. Yep. Uh, Darth Vader's saying a goodbye to the Emperor. That's nice. And they <laughs> played a bit of Imperial March, which is nice. Yeah. Then, they, then there's the buddy comedies coming up, which is nice. That is nice. What do you think about the music in this, though? I felt like it wasn't something that kind of thrilled me. And this is often an area that I fall down in. Uh, yeah, it's a real about. blind spot for me. I don't yeah. know. I generally see here's the thing. I don't I, I don't generally notice a score unless it is very jarring and bad. So I'm gonna say, well done, everybody. If people uh know things about music, let us know if mm. w- is it it's good. Is if it I, good? if any of the members of Van Halen are listening. Yeah. Let, let us, us know. Let us know. Are they all alive? No. Okay. Yeah, great. <laughs> But then it ended, of course. Well, one of the endings yep. is uh, Obi Wan. He finally packed up his little horrible little dank cave. <laughs> he's, he's clean. He's cleaned himself up, and he's moving to. I'll just check my notes here. Tatooine fraternity house. <laughs> oh, no. Bom bom. <laughs> chica, chica. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's not cleaned up his act at all. No, he's yeah. going all in. Yeah. Yeah, but he did seem pretty happy with himself at the end, he didn't did, he? Because yeah. he was like, a lot of this wasn't my fault. But, I mean, I would say 20% of it was your fault mm. of what happened to Anakin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know he was forced upon you, as it mm. were. But, yeah. you know, you could have killed him earlier. It's true, yeah. And you didn't. Yeah. Again, also. Yeah. Look, I think, all in all, I think this is something that there could have been a bunch kind of cut out of it or or condensed. Mm, a movie, if you will. Yeah, a movie, if you will. But look, all in all, I, I think it was fine. I think it had, mm. like all Star Wars, yes. it had some really high elements that I very much enjoyed and some moments where I'm like, eh, whatever, or that particular decision I, I don't agree with. But I think for me, that is Star Wars always. Mm, if yeah, you look yeah. at Star Wars, like from any time period, and, it, you know, it's... It's harder to do that for the older stuff and the more classic stuff or the stuff that you grew up on whenever that is. But it's always peaks and troughs. It sure is, yeah. You know? Yeah. And, look, I know some people might be like, you know, you're afraid of Disney, you're afraid of Backlash. But we, Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but, look, again. And we are. We're afraid of them. They can destroy <laughs> us. They have billions of dollars. But there's, there's – there's, but they haven't noticed us and they, they haven't, haven't noticed. We, then we don't, and don't tell them. Don't tell them about that us. That we're saying middling things. Mm, unless they're going to give us free stuff. Yeah, but there's there's things that, you know, there's really silly stuff about Star Wars that I love that people don't love. For example, Obi-Wan hiding Leia under his coat like he was sneaking into a cinema. Uh-huh. I fucking love that stuff. Yeah. Like I, it's, I know it's ridiculous, but I also can put myself in the mindset that every every Imperial – He's wearing my, a helmet. My coupon for free popcorn hasn't expired. He does the, <laughs> he does the thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, but they're all very they, – they, you can't trick a cinema employee. No, but I'm talking about, you know, the stormtroopers. They're all wearing helmets. They're all busy. Yes. They, they're incompetent. Yeah. They're just, you know, they're, you know, they're just doing a job and maybe they didn't notice a man <laughs> smuggling a girl under his coat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm okay with that stuff, and but also I know that other people aren't and that's totally okay. Anyway, what did you think of this series in general? I liked it. Yeah, Good fun. What would you Good give it? Everybody back. What would you give it out of uh, one hundred? Wow. Yeah, I was going to say out of a thousand. You didn't let me finish one hundred thousand <laughs> out of a thousand. <laughs> okay, terrific. Now it's good. Uh, it's good to end on a quote, like any classic essay. Oh yeah. This is via a uh, British GQ. We're going classy, okay, Mason. All right, all right. Yeah, here we go. Uh, Oi, bruv! It starts. <laughs> that's right. This is via Ewan McGregor himself. There's a lot of homoerotic Obi Wan slash Hayden Christensen fan art that gets sent to me now and again. Or fart, as they call it. That's right. You open the envelope, you think you're going to have to sign something, and you're like, fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> so that's fun. Yeah, that is fun, yeah. What do you want out of this in the future? They're definitely. Homoerotic Star Wars art. <laughs> Till that. Nothing, I don't think. Do you want another I don't season? have any more room. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you want Qui-Gon's adventures with Obi-Wan? Yes. I, I don't think you can do a Darth Vader rematch, but maybe Mace Windu turns up and he's like, God, I'm tired. Can, can I like I've been down? hanging off the side of this building for, <laughs> for years now. Yeah. I mean, it kind of definitively closes the door on a bunch of stuff. Yeah. But I can't see them putting an end to this. Maybe not even as a series. Maybe mm. it becomes a movie. Maybe he shows up in another I think they are series. very pointedly... Looking towards Obi Wan Qui Gon team up, or at least a second season where Obi Wan maybe just does some good deeds in the universe, yeah, and solves some people's problems. Maybe he teams up with a Mandalorian. Are they in the same, roughly the same time period? Yeah, he'd be Could around. Be? Yeah, he'd be young, but he'd be around. Okay, and I guess 
The other thing, or Reva, maybe they could all team yeah, up. Yeah, totally. I mean, she's, and then she's got to be killed because she's not in the <laughs> she's not in the original trilogy. There's a lot of people who are not in the original trilogy. Or that maybe are she alive. retires. Maybe yeah. she retires. Yeah. For a second, I thought she was going to like impale herself. I thought like that was the yeah, right, right, right. the way it was going to go. But I also think they left the door open for for further Obi Wan adventures because he's like to Owen and Baru. Yeah, you guys got this. I think mm. you guys could handle this. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh-huh. So you know, if he needs to leave the planet because mm-hmm. you know I don't want another series set among sand and rocks you know yeah, th- yeah. that's that's hopefully possible how about this young uncle owen and aunt baru adventures where they get them guns where they get them guns right and how they i was going to say how the stormtroopers kill them all but there was probably a bunch of them i guess <laughs> or a big bomb <laughs> or perhaps. a big bomb perhaps did it yeah god they were down to the skeleton they what really happened are. there some people suspect it was boba fett but uh he's a good guy now so it probably wasn't yeah him. it definitely wasn't him no no he would have <laughs> He would have um, spent a few months on their moisture farm helping them fix all the equipment. So, That's right, exactly. how honourable he is <laughs> and has always been. We support uh, that decision. Mm, yep, love as, it. as we do all decisions. Yeah, anyways, thank you so much to Collings for editing this. We're going to be doing uh, more reviews for things like this. We're going to be doing a Ms. Marvel wrap-up, oh, aren't we? Love that Ms. Marvel. When that, when that, uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying that at the moment. Same. So let's, uh, I think also that will now have some, you know, room to breathe things as they... Debut on the same They're on night. They're the same every, night, every yes, week, which yeah. is probably not a great idea. But I think that's a character that people are, you know, it's just going to – I know the stats weren't great, like, starting off, but I think that's something that is going to build. But anyways, if you liked this and you're like, do you have a podcast? Correct. Great guess. We have a podcast. It's called The Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. It comes out every Monday. And if you would like to see that early, we've got our own private Patreon at BigSandwich.co where there's early videos, mm-hmm. bonus podcasts, oh. movie commentaries. Whoa. There's so many great – there's a huge back catalogue there, isn't there, Mason? Very true. Mason, do you want to give out your Twitter handle? No. Okay. Wikipedia Brown. There it is. I changed my mind. Good sentence. <laughs> Terrific stuff. What would you give your Twitter handle out of? One. One. Mm-hmm. That was what I was going to say. Out of one. You'd give it one? Yeah, it's the perfect Twitter, <laughs> it's the perfect Twitter feed as far as I'm concerned. Fantastic. Thanks, everyone. I'm mostly <laughs> silent. That's why it's so good. <laughs> Great. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you uh, later. Grab that, Jimmy, guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye.